Hi, my name is Raul Saganananthan. I am the Vice President of Christian Students Uniting at the University of Sydney, where I study a Bachelor of Arts and Law, and I'm also a member of Leica Uniting Church. I care about environmental action because as a Christian, we're, cared, we're called to love our neighbours. And um, the unfortunate truth about climate change is that those who are going to be first hit by you know, increasing, increasingly extreme weather events are going to be the poor and the disadvantaged. It's going to be you know, farmers who are facing more droughts, for example. So that's why I'm really passionate about it. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Climate Fest today. Yeah, thanks, Raul. My name's James Sheriff. Um, I'm currently working at Shelton, New South Wales, but I recently graduated from University of Sydney with a Bachelor of International and Global Studies. Um, I'm also active on a couple of political groups on campus, like the Australian Student Environment Network and the UC Environmental, Environmental Collective. Um, I think environmental action has always been something that's, um, that, that moves me to, uh, to action. Um, because I grew up in the Blue Mountains and it's something that you sort of see every day. Um, but I don't think the urgency of it really hit me until you sort of experience um, the direct impacts of climate change, um, which we did when bushfires swept through the community as they did in many other communities um, twice in the last 10 years. Um, and I think something that makes me really passionate about this is you know, seeing my family pack their lives up into boxes every summer just waiting for the threat of fire to sweep through. Um, but what makes me inspired is the, is the amount of people that have come out onto the streets last summer to demand urgent climate action and the amount of people that really care about this issue. So I'm excited to talk about the concept of power here today. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge that we are recording this on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Um, I'd like to pay respects to the leaders of this community and elders, both past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that the Indigenous people have a strong and lasting connection to this land that we gather, work, live, study, and organize on. It's something that we should acknowledge, acknowledge in all our work, and it's something that we should center. We should work to always prioritize Indigenous voices and Indigenous justice in this kind of organizing, because it is central to building a strong movement. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a piece of community organizing theory, all about power. So um, if you're not familiar, community organizing is a tool for social change, and it works by building power, by connecting people with shared interests to take action. An example could be different religious groups and unions coming together and realizing they're facing a common issue, such um, as insufficient government support during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and, and they could join up to speak up and pressure politicians to achieve more income support, um, which is actually something that recently happened as coordinated by the Sydney Alliance um, Community Organising Organisation. And, and this approach of community organising recognises that significant social change tends to come about through coordinated action of a number of people, rather than just through a few isolated individuals. Yeah, so with this framework of community organizing, how should we think about and use power? Let's get into it. So the first thing we'd like you to do is to type in the comments something that comes to mind when you hear the word power. What are some connotations you have? What are some implications of the word? What are the connections that you make to different ideas and conceptions of how it's used? Um, we'll give you a minute. So let's, let's discuss some of these different perspectives on power. Most of you probably have a word that would fit into this first category, which we can describe as unilateral power. We have words like secretive, exclusive, overbearing, and manipulative. Um, and unilateral power is essentially about power over others. It is often used by large corporations and institutions and has a negative connotations a lot, of, a lot of the time, like control and domination. It operates on the idea that power is a finite resource, that some people have power while others don't. 
You may also have a word that could fit into this category, relational power. Words like open, inclusive, supportive, creative. And relational power is about power with others. It's about multiple peers coming together, using collaboration and mutual understanding to work as one. Yeah, and if your word doesn't fit into either of these categories, that's all right. Power is a nuanced and complex concept, but it generally fits into these broad, two broad categories, unilateral and relational. There's also a strong moral connection to the idea of power, which is why it tends to fall into these two um, broad sort of buckets. Um, and it's, that's connected to the idea that power can be used for either good or evil, that it's, there's a duality of power and that power is power corrupts and that absolute power corrupts absolutely. In actual fact though, the real quote is power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this indicates that power isn't just about this moral conception of good and bad. We'd actually like to define power as simply the ability to act. This means that it's not intrinsically linked to moral ideas of good or bad. It's simply about having the tools, knowledge, and the willingness to take action. This action can be in solidarity with others, as in relational power, or it can be at the expense of others, unilateral power. We like to call these two kinds of power, power with and power over. So what does this look like in real life? Power over is about removing agency, whereas power over is about providing agency. And so generally we like to use power with because it's about communal strength rather than one person dominating over another. Although, I, although like um, in not all situations um, is, is this, this true, sometimes you want power over. A good example is during, say, the building's on fire, you want a fire warden to just take charge and say, hey, we're going down this fire escape because there's obviously time pressure. You don't want the people to like gather around at a meeting and say, oh, we sh and find consensus on the best escape route. Um, in this situation, you probably want power over. But um, most of the time, especially in community organizing and, 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 and trying to find um, social justice, we want to use power with. Um, uh, an example of strong power with is union organizing. And a recent, uh, recent story to do with this was the United Workers Union's action, United Workers Union action against Woolworths. So recently in Wyong, the Woolworths workers there were facing some pretty terrible working conditions, um, especially during COVID when they're such an essential um, workforce. So they um, realized they had, um, were facing a common issue and they went on strike demanding better conditions. They went on strike and they were on the picket lines for a week, but they were locked out. Um, uh, eventually though, when, um, they persisted for long enough. Um, they earned concessions and were offered double what they were before the strike. This is a really good example of how coming together is, is a lot more effective than an individual. You have a lot more power as a collective than um, as an individual in these situations. So ultimately as community organizers, we want to be engaging with power with because it's more effective for achieving common goals. Yeah, exactly. And that being said, this principle does not only apply to community organizing, but also to other things like environmental activism and um, campaigns for racial justice. Um, this idea of, of power with and building collective solidarity and adding to growing to the movement um, is something that's really key to building any kind of solid movement for justice. Uh, and it's something that we should focus on um, instead of just seizing power or in being opportunistic, we should always be focusing on how we can bring people together and bring people into solidarity with each other through seeking to build power with. Exactly. And so our call to action to you is to find something that you can take power on. Maybe it's something you learned from the other videos during this climate fest and even better team up. Who in your community or friend group might be interested? Type them in the comments, an idea that you can take power on. Um, and, and yeah, just remember that relational power is ours for the taking.